Hello, my name is Josh Ackerman. I'm part of the engineering team here at SimTech Automation. And today I wanted to show you how to simply create a pick and place with visual components. The nice thing about visual components is it can show you some differences between different robots and how it's going to affect your attack time. On top of that, it kind of shows you how much space and how expensive real estate is inside of your industrial plant. Is it going to be worth it? Are you going to get enough ROI out of using that space to do a certain feature? So I'm going to take show you how to pull everything into the 3D world that you need or create this pick and place application. And fortunately, something like this is super easy, super simple to create, and it's only gonna take us a couple minutes to do. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pull in a couple conveyors. So I'm gonna pull in two straight line conveyors. And then what's created in my boxes is called a shape feeder. So I'm gonna pull in that as well. The shape feeder by default will create these boxes. However, I can go in there and I can upload my own CAD files or I can tell it it's a different geometric shape and I can change the size to those as well and make it a little bit variable to what I want to show. I'm going to move that into place. The next thing I'm going to need is what Visual Components has is called a machine tending library. And what this does is it allows us to simply make interconnections between conveyors and robots without having to do some in-depth programming, which is also something visual components can do. However, for something you need to do on the fly, something super quick to see the differences between one robot to the next, you can also do that very easily just using the machine tending. So we're gonna pull in through the machine tending library. We're gonna need this, we're gonna need one outlet. And this is gonna be for our pick location, one outlet for our place location, and we'll need a robot tending, our machine tending robot manager. And once we get all this out, we can start putting these things together. So in Visual Components, you have something that's called PNP. And what this does is anytime you see this green arrow, it'll show you that these two interconnect. As soon as I get it close by, it immediately connects. Same thing with our inlet. So this is going to be for our pick location. I'll get our robot manager put into place. I'll get our second conveyor kind of in a place where I would like it. And I'm going to get our outlet put into place. And again, I can use PNP on this as well. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to want to change the height of my robot pedestal a little bit so I can go into these default parameters. And I'm going to make it 650 millimeters high. Then I can pull in our robot that we want to use. And I'm going to use a UR10E again. And I'm going that in the place and again we'll do PNP. So I can just bring it over to the robot manager. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in a standard gripper. Go down here and I'm going to pull out my parametric gripper. And it is also PNP to the end of the robot. So it'll just snap in the place. And that is everything I need there. The last thing I'll have to do is when we use a machine tending library, we have is this interface tab. And this will allow us to select that machine tending robot manager. Once we're there, we'll make these connections. You don't have to go in any particular order. And once those are connected, turn off interfaces, and I can press play. Now what we should see is just a simple pick and place. I'm going to grab one conveyor and place it down to the next. And something as simple as that makes it super quick and easy to put something together just so I can see some differences between different robots. So likewise, if I want to sit here and I want to see what the difference is between a 10E and a 5E, I can sit here and I can pull out a UR5E. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to exchange robots with this 10. Apply that, put the 5 in the place, and now I can immediately start looking at the differences between the 5 and not just reach, but also time. See, so what I was currently doing, and the reason this whole thing stopped, is because the 5 doesn't currently have enough reach to get everywhere I need to go with this. So I'd actually have to make some changes to the 3D world, and that's how I was able to find out 10E is currently 
set up perfectly for what I'm try currently trying to show. So I can currently go back and I can exchange my robots again. Put that back into place and we can go back and we'll see that our pick and place starts to go. And it's just as simple as that, I have started a pick and place routine, just kind of start seeing the differences between different worlds robots in the 3D world, which is extremely beneficial because now I don't have to sit there and spend the time to actually either A, potentially buy these robots and find out that it doesn't work, or B, pay to find out from someone else, is this robot going to work versus something else? If there's anything else, any other questions, please reach out to Semtech and let us know how we can help you with either visual components or anything robotic. Thank you.